Good evening and welcome to the Channel Studios here in London with your international news around the world in five. A draft agreement at the COP26 climate summit has watered down commitments to end the use of coal and other fossil fuels as countries race to reach a deal after two weeks of talks. Talks went on through the night inside the green-lit summit meeting rooms in Glasgow. The draft agreement asks for much tighter deadlines for governments to reveal their plans to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and strengthen the support for poorer countries fighting climate change. Outside the meetings, protesters wearing papier-mâché heads portraying world leaders said their real counterparts had so far failed to put out a planetary fire. They called on world leaders to make the most of the final hours. Meanwhile, activists deflated tyres on SUV-style cars in Glasgow in the closing days of COP26 in protest against their contribution to carbon emissions. Scottish media reported a number of vehicles had been targeted by a group called Tired of SUVs and quoted Scotland's police service as saying they would increase patrols in the area. Western members of the UN Security Council have condemned Belarus for the escalating crisis over migrants stranded on its border with Poland. This tactic is unacceptable. Thousands of people, many of them Kurds, arriving from the Middle East, are camping at the border with Poland, enduring freezing conditions in the hope of crossing into the EU. The migrants are mainly young men, but they're also women and children. Earlier, Belarus's leader threatened to cut off gas supplies to Europe if new sanctions were imposed. The EU accuses Belarus of using the migrants to destabilize the European Union's eastern border. Russia, Belarus's main ally, rejected the accusations. A Myanmar military court has sentenced the US journalist Danny Fenster to 11 years in jail. Fenster was found guilty of breaching immigration law, unlawful association and encouraging dissent against the military. He was earlier this week slapped with two additional charges of sedition and terrorism which carry a maximum sentence of life imprisonment. His trial on the new charges will begin on the 16th of November. The UN says the Sudanese army chief's decision to appoint a new ruling council that he leads makes it harder to return to the constitutional order. It's after Sudan's army chief, Abdel Fattah al burnan was sworn in as head of a new transitional council he appointed to lead the country following the military takeover late last month. The new 14-member sovereign council includes civilians representing Sudan's regions, but none of the forces for freedom and change that had been sharing power with the military in a democratic transition since 2019. A Rwandan YouTube star has been sentenced to seven years in jail for criticizing the government. Diudone Nyonsenga, known as Kiyuma or Iron, was found guilty of forgery, impersonation and humiliating state officials. He denies the allegations and says he will appeal. His videos have accused soldiers of serious abuses against slum dwellers during a coronavirus lockdown. Another popular YouTube personality recently received a 15-year sentence for inciting violence. The French president has met with his Italian counterpart Mario Draghi ahead of a security summit on Libya. Emmanuel Macron also welcomed Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi at the Elysee Presidential Palace for a working lunch. He later chaired the International Summit on Libya in the attendance of United States Vice President Kamala Harris and acting German Chancellor Angela Merkel. Pope Francis has said that the world has become deaf to the plight of the poor and condemned those who become disproportionately rich while blaming the needy for their own fate. Francis travelled to Assisi, the birthplace of St Francis, to meet with about 500 poor people from Europe ahead of the Catholic Church's World Day of the Poor, which will be marked around the world on Sunday. Francis, who was elected in 2013 as the first Latin American Pope, has made defence of the poor a cornerstone of his pontificate. And finally, a penguin that got lost has found itself on the shores of New Zealand, at least 3,000 kilometres from its natural habitat of Antarctica. The Adélie penguin, who has now been affectionately named Pingu by locals, was found on the coast. Rescuers took him to the Department of Conservation New Zealand, where he was fed and cared for after being dehydrated. A few days later, the bird was released back into the wild. It is only the third recorded incident of an Adélie penguin being found on New Zealand's coast. And that's your international news around the world in five. Now back to the Channel Studios in Lagos.